This piece is called Release. I release inner torment and self-doubt that comes from being lovelorn, an unwashed puppy still giving in to precociousness, questionable perceptions, damage control, attempting to ameliorate invasive stressors that threaten safety, sabotaging heightened ascent. I release the continued stress coming from barely surviving. Walls collapse as they encase the vacuum. Vacancy, empty spaces of memory crammed with insecurity. Residue of abuse endures. Tarnished embolism imminent as I maintain my shine. I am only green from cobbler copulating with my coping. Copious as we are mortis on the corpse of capital casualty. There's always cause and effect. Delicate dance on the cotton's knife edge, a circus acrobat teetering on the verge of falling not free as astonished captive audiences have hearts in their throats, anticipating descents, dirges, but still callously cheering as if there's hilarity in witnessing rock bottom heckle if you must. I'll pay no attention to your diligent distrust. I am not your tabloid train wreck to forget the full covered advertisements tinged into yellow matter cluster dripping down me Mr. Mustard's chin. I will not come in through your bedroom window entertaining you as I once again saunter through sadness. Trust me, as I fall into the arms of almighty assholes, I am not a whore of biblical proportions, for I still stand, even though I am winded and I am limping. Though my Achilles heel is pierced by society's barbs, I risk bathing in my own blood, pools of tissue and pus. I attempt to walk it off with indomitable defiance. I am the architect of my own destiny. I am the master builder orchestrating his own fate as I avert my own crucifixion. Seldom a feeble sheep to discontent slaughter. Bountiful brotherhood levitates my steadily collapsing spirit, summoning the fortitude of 180 degree turnaround. And I will never want to look back and define myself by my lamentations and transgressing. I am the retrograde, or so I surmise, planetary poise, crabs scuttling through Venus. Let me care less about the value judgments of fainting goats, for I am still rising and releasing. And one day I'll walk away to prevent the decay of gray matter. I owe myself an apology for the times I care too much, and today is the day I forgive myself. All right, we do poems together, we also do poems individually. This is my poem dedicated to my hometown. I am from Staten Island, New York. Thank you. I'm glad you're not about to be This is dedicated to my youth in Staten Island, and it is called The Seven. We were seven kids housed within bricks and bushes on Manor Road. We were a congregation in a Sanctuary protecting our innocence and our dogs rest in peace, red and spock. We had congregation Bene Gesture on Martling Avenue and the Knights of Columbus on Main Avenue. We were aware that the hidden binder and four star video contained pornography. We were raised on penny candy, nickel arcades, dime bags, quarter drinks, and daughter Sundays and the fill your dubby debby. We knew the value of a half dollar. We shared our space with soldiers protecting their tanks and weapons in the Staten Island Armory. We were brothers and sisters sitting on the porch in the summer. We were raised by each other's parents. We were the residents of a cardboard clubhouse. We were dwellers of basements leading to a communal garage. We were comforted by bricks. We were within a facade of rose bushes planted from days of yore. We were illuminated every 4th of July by snap sparklers drawn by candles and bottle rockets. 
We were outdone by the fireworks displays across the street. We were the guardians of the lightning bugs in the summer night. We grew up with Billy Joel, Bonnie Tyler, John Lennon, Cindy Lauper, Michael Jackson, Madonna, Whitney Houston, and the police blasting on boom boxes and rotating on, rotating on record players. We didn't need Ralph's Italian ices when we had cups of marinas in the counter freezer. We found solace in a Tatari 2600 and a Commodore 64. We were one of the few clans who owned the ColecoVision Atom computer. We remember the greats. Space Invaders, Asteroids, Missile Command, Buck Rogers, Cuba, Burger Tongue, Galaga, Tetris, and every incarnation of Half Man. We remembered when AOL was Q Link. We were too poor for MTV, so we had the box instead, music television, you can say. We were really glad and made the children's aid society. We could sing the Mount Airy Lodge theme song effortlessly. <laughs> All you have to bring is your love of everything. Beautiful Mount Airy Lodge. We watched Steve High Valley and Channel 9 and knew the name Mario Cantone before Sex in the City. We wondered if Teddy Ruxpin would sing along to Judas Priest. We have no idea how many light bright pegs we were missing around our house. We knew how to play outside. We planted tomato gardens and swam in an inflatable wading pool. We chewed bazooka gum and collected the comic strips. We felt the bubbles sting the insides of our noses when we drank Coca-Cola Classic. We remembered how Doritos were sharp enough to open an envelope. We were too young to remember the guy who stole the tank from the armory, and we are too old to turn back now. We were the seven. We were Jack, Nadine, Jesse, Alex, Laura, Lena, and Mitchell. Rest in peace, Mitchell. We were the seven who were never rich in our lives, but we were the seven who won the jackpot. This piece was just published in the 2024 New Generation Beats Anthology. It is called Blood Pact. Spelunking in sand dunes of lived epiphany, mercurial moments featuring contemplation, risk, a cave-in of the mind, psyche grappling with monoliths of loss, long-winded internal monologues threaten to sabotage progression, thoughts on the defensive, playing inside the paint, layoffs shattering glass. We are either heroes or villains of our own stories, without contractual obligation for repeat appearances. Crafting ongoing narratives spanning multiple issues flip pages of graphic novels that encapsulate visual and auditory stimuli, origin stories, and arcs of triumph, sacrifice, victory laps, crafting bigger pictures, see macrocosmic elements take effective root, honking, hollering, passerby, complete passages of a soul's nomadic journey. Selfishness sold in bulk. Selflessness cast out, cards folded, chips in, poker faces drop their mystery, misery loving company, let richness of moments lived provide solace, no room for morbid solemnity. Ancestral flickers act as homages to yesteryear, a healthy dose of self-imposed isolation. Limitations leave scars like misplaced tattoos tagged on porous skin, motors running. Automobile needs a catalyst to reach maximum torque, a home on the road, traveling, uh, yeah, uh, Traveling tunefully town to town, techniques can be transitory, like transient, globe-trotting beings remaking worlds in their likeness. Favorability ratings of bleeding heart politicians plummet without humanity recourse, irrespective of agenda. Not everyone is an accomplice. Adjust your expectations accordingly. Don't go catatonic body 
seizing up through sensory overload, foaming at the mouth, books filled with portraits of bodies without faces, no unique identifiers, a bunch of John and Jane Doe's. Search for incriminating evidence, crimes against populaces committed by conniving oligarchs who twist power structures for personal gain, make it rain, overflow of capital, yet cities go underfunded. A pact is made, but it isn't signed in blood. Yeah. Oh. Okay, we're gonna do one more. And this is another group piece. And this is called RPM. In a mad scramble to avert the apocalypse, we dine on everyday civility and decorum, keeping up appearances, code switching, mid-conversation makes it telepathic. We may be sinking faster than the Titanic as craters engulf houses and farmland and deforestation sweeps a steadily vacant nation, breath converts to wheezing, collective bodies. We are in the barren wasteland of bored wits, appearing apathetic yet brazenly burdened by a nation sinking to the depths of demagoguery. Supposedly, we are wildflowers, yet are forcefully removed from our ecosystem like weeds. We are the purposeful in our advocacy. We are inactive as the aperture captures idle minds. It's difficult to captivate as the murder rate skyrockets to new highs. Erstwhile vagabonds slain without ample news coverage. A new suffrage movement grows as fear and drudgery supplant well-meaning initiatives. Laxatives ingested flush out toxins from a jaundiced body, teeth and eyes. Yellow as the new sun, I am equipped with the Virgo moon as I wrestle with my purpose in the afternoon. In tune is my third eye, in bloom is my blurred mind. Behind the curtains we see shortened lifespan, mindscapes of experts derided, but the smart ones get murdered by the ignoramuses. Idiocracy incremental in the instrumental eradication of free will, of free thinking, of free expression, regression, of social expectations is a plague worse than losing your firstborn child. Mothers and fathers never recover from the vacant emptiness. One less dinner plate to wash as uneasy anxiety creeps, disease of the nuclear household. Broken families, battered ballistic. It's sadistic. Political insiders subjugate society with loopholes and system gains. Fractured bloodlines and generational curses haunt like overbearing apparitions. Who you gonna call? The Ghostbuster phone is disconnected. It's anyone out there safe. Foundations rupture as car tires flatten, unable to gain momentum. Unraveling air stripped from healthy lungs, tongues bitten and mini glossolalia. There are paleontologists who can't decipher defining aspects of this period of civilization, devolution to Neanderthal knuckle dragging. Dragon recaptures the breath confiscated. Mouth is a pyre for the embers of lost ethics, pathological liars, and aesthetic of truth. Uncouth. No proof. Wisdom tooth extracted by sadists too unenlightened to operate under natural lighting. Syringe, plunge in the darkest annals battering the gum line. Imagination is noosed by Satan's iron grip. The world bled dry of all its possibilities as children suffer the sins of their forebears. Tantric sex titillates the shot-calling juggernauts who ground humanity into nothingness. With mortar and pestle, the remains of humankind's greatest heroes are extinguished. With a stale salute, soldiers with no purpose march to 
the beat of another's drum as captains of industry quarrel over petty trivialities. For the cycle to end, the wheels must cease to spin. Replace these axles with the foundation to keep revolving. And may this cipher keep moving within an upright position, even as we lay. <laughs>